So it is no secret that I love toasted barrel bourbons and ryes. I just, I'm a big fan of what a secondary barrel can contribute to the flavor profile of a whiskey with the brown sugars, depending on obviously the level of toasting that you do on the barrel itself. But man, there's some good flavors to be gained by that secondary barrel. Well, I have always seen these bottles on like shared pour and seal box. This is K-Luke. This is their toasted barrel finish. And I got to give a big shout out to Kells for sending the sample into me because I've never pulled the trigger on one. And this is going to let me know whether or not next time I see them, I should. So this is a 2024 blend. And uh, again, this is K-Luke. This is their toasted bourbon. And uh, what they do with it is they're blenders, right? The, the guy that started the K-Luke uh, company, Jonathan, he's, he's a master blender. You know, he's like done extensive sensory training to really appreciate aromas and, and nuanced flavors. And so he tastes tons of different barrels and then he selects a very small batch. And so in this case, this is just 10 barrels that were blended together, just 10, very small batch to make this bottle. So uh, thanks again, Kels, for letting me get a two ounce sample out of your bottle. I appreciate your generosity. Today I'm gonna find out if K. Luke Toasted is, uh, is worth $110. Cause that's what it is on Shared Pour. Well, at least last time I saw it in SharePoint, that's what they were asking. It was like $109.99. So it's not like it's super cheap, but it is. Uh, very small batches. And we don't know exactly where he sources from because he tastes from all over the place. So it could be barrels from a few different distilleries, as far as we know. And uh, the mash bills might vary as well. So he's not limiting himself on those things. He's going purely off of taste and aroma to find what whiskeys are going to work best in the blend. So this comes in at 118.2 for the proof. Yeah, toasted barrel finishes have become pretty popular these days. In the past couple years, really, they've really taken off. You know, uh, a lot of some of the most sought after bourbons out there, you think of like, I think it was the Parker's Heritage, was it the 16 or the 15? I, was it, I think it was the 16. That was like the double barrel bourbons and it was hailed as by many people as like the best Parker's Heritage bottle of all time. You've got obviously the 13th Colony double oaked, is pretty highly sought after. The twice barreled uh, limited release from Jack Daniels, the twice barreled rye was uh, a big winner last year. So these toasted secondary barreled bourbons and ryes really taken off. So it's a pretty competitive uh, genre, I think at this point. So if you're gonna have something that people are gonna wa wanna buy, it's gotta stand toe to toe with some pretty stiff competition. So we're gonna find out today if K. Luke can do that. And again, this is NDP non-distiller producer. They don't distill this. He's a master blender, so he goes all over the... Sounds like a really rough job, actually. Travel all over the place and uh, take samples, thief out of barrels from lots of different distilleries and warehouses. Just drink a bunch of whiskey and find out which ones would work best in a blend. But I don't doubt that it is difficult work. I think blending is underappreciated as uh, an art form of itself. But let's get in here. Let's get some, uh, some nosing notes on this thing. Reminds me a lot of nutmeg and a, a gingerbread cookie on the nose. I think of Red Hots as well, those little cinnamon imperials, and a lot of sweet oak as well. Sweet oak on the nose. On the nose alone, I think you could release this as like a, a holiday blend and it would be spot on. Yeah, it's a really pretty nose. Let's get in on it. Hey, cheers. I'm getting a lot of those sweet notes. You know, the baking spices, a little bit of cinnamon and vanilla. But I'm also getting this like really heavy medicinal quality to it as well. Like an old timey pharmacy. But the finish is where it really comes back around to this whole toasted barrel idea. So the toasted barrel, I don't get a lot of that up front, but the toasting, those soft brown sugars and delicate sweet oak, that comes right back around in the finish. So it's like I get these holiday spices up front followed by these really medicinal qualities. I don't want to say it reminds me of like Robitussin or something like that because that sounds really bad. And I don't mean that as a bad note, but it does have a sort of medicinal quality to it. And then it comes right back around to those sweet uh, brown sugar and oaky notes right there at the tail end. Some spiciness on the sides of my mouth there too on the second sip. The more I drink it, the more forward the oak comes as I sort of my palate sort of acclimates to those medicinal qualities. I'm able to pick out more oak earlier in the sip than just the finish as well. So the more I sip it, the more that second barrel really comes alive to me. Now I'm reminded of like a, a honey menthol cough drop a little bit on this one. That's not a bad double oak right there. The real challenge the NDPs have is that they need to make a product that can compete 
with other like actual distilleries that are pumping out great products of the same sort of genre. So for example, one of my top bottles last year was that twice barreled Jack Daniels rye. But the thing is Jack Daniels distilled the juice, right? They didn't have to go to somebody else who did the work and taste a, you know, use a bunch of their time, taste a bunch of their barrels, select things, and then buy those barrels from that distiller and do that from multiple different distilleries and then meticulously blend things together. So there's a lot of investment that these NDPs have up front because they have to pay other people for more work that was done in the process that they didn't do themselves. So because of that, in order to make up for their investment, they have to raise the prices a bit on these products. So the challenge here is that I think this is a, a pretty good toasted bourbon but it has to compete with other pretty good toasted bourbons that cost 30, 40, sometimes $50 less. You know, I'm thinking of the um, you know, Woodford Reserve Double Oaked. And that's, that is just all around a very consistently yummy double oaked product for 60 bucks. The investment cost is a lot less for them, so they can afford to put a $60 price tag on that bourbon. Now, admittedly, this is not the exact same as that because this is obviously higher proof, smaller batch, so it's not a one-to-one -one there. But you do have other things that are higher proof that are coming out of distilleries and heritage distillers that are double oaked. And this has to compete with those. So one of my favorite bottles this year so far has been the Fiddler Toasted Rye. Now, again, it's not a bourbon, it's a rye, but it is a toasted secondary barreled American whiskey. And um, that's coming out of Georgia. And that bottle's, uh, nine, I think it's off the top of my head, I think that's a $90 bottle. So $20 less. And I think I like that bottle a little bit more than this. So again, that's the challenge of NDPs like this. They can make good products. And I think this is a good product. The only problem is that it's 110 bucks. So if I were to give this K. Luke toasted bourbon a score on my scale, I think I'm gonna have to come in at a 7.2 because I think this is firmly in the really good category. The only thing that's keeping it from reaching higher towards the excellent uh, benchmark would be that price point because for me I'm drinking this and I'm enjoying it but I don't th I don't know that I'm enjoying it a hundred and dollar a hundred and ten dollars enjoying it I think I'm more like enjoying it like a eighty dollars enjoying it you know what I does that make sense I think for eighty bucks I'd be much more inclined to uh, have a smile on my face while sipping this at a hundred and ten dollars I think I'm a little skeptical but on taste alone pretty good double oak product right here yeah it certainly is not difficult to sip so there you go, that's the K. Luke Toasted 2024 Batch 2 uh, review. That sip suddenly gave me a little graham cracker, for what it's worth. Hey, thanks again, Kells. I appreciate you for sharing uh, this sip with me. Very generous of you, very kind of you. I like it. Big shout out to my Patreon supporters and Discord members who send me samples to review, and the Patreon supporters that fund the bottles we get to pick up and review here on the channel. I uh, really do appreciate your support. It's what keeps the channel going so we can have you know, three videos a week come out of the channel. That's all because of you guys and your support. So I really do appreciate that because there's no way that uh, I could just go out there and buy three bottles a week to review the channel. That would uh, get really expensive really fast. But thank you so much for your support. Love and appreciate each and every one of you. Hey, if you're new here, feel free to hit the subscribe button and uh, we'd love to see you around again. And uh, like the video if you enjoyed it as that's the best free way to support the content here on YouTube. We'd love to see you over in the Discord. The link is in the description. And uh, I try to keep that thing updated, but if it ever times out, just let me know and I'll, I'll update the link in the description as well. But come say hi and introduce yourself. We'd love to see you. Cheers, my friends. May you live richly and get better with age. And I hope to catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>